In the last video, we talked about linking our particle cloud account with our Gmail account by using ift. And this was great for some really interesting projects that can get quite complicated and integrate lots of different services. But ift is a little bit slow sometimes. It can take several minutes for the trigger to be processed because it is a free service. So if you're using your Raspberry Pi in an application where timing is quite important and you want it to respond very quickly to an event, you can keep your entire project within the particle cloud only and publish between, say, Raspberry Pis or other particle devices. So on the bench, I have my trusty Raspberry Pi 3B with the same LED circuit as in the last video. And on the left here, I have a Raspberry Pi 0W. If you don't know what that is, it's just a small footprint Raspberry Pi that has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. So it's really, really good for small, power efficient, enclosed projects that are going to be installed somewhere, like a remote sensor. So here is the, here is the project that I want to build. I want to flash this LED for the number of times that a button is pressed. So on the first press, I want the LED to flash. On the second press, I want it to flash twice, and so on and so forth. And then the second button is just a reset button to reset that total count. So even though they're both sitting on the same table, these pies are connected by nothing other than the particle cloud. So all of, all of this data is going to be going through the particle cloud only. There's no physical connection. So we can grab the demo code for this section, and the first, the first piece of code is for the publisher. That's the pi zero. So I'm going to, going to scroll to the top of that application. This publishing script would work equally as well on another Pi 3B. They're, they'll both be compatible. I've just drawn it here as a Pi 0, but the GPIO is the same. So after copying that example code, I can go over to particle build. There's our, um, our application from last time. I'm going to create a new application there. I'm going to call it pub for publish and just paste in that code and save that. Now I can go over to, uh, and what we can do is flash, flash this now. So you can see our target is currently set to the Pi 3B. So if you go over to the left menu for this crosshairs symbol, you can see the devices that are registered to your account. I've already registered the Pi 0 to my account, so I'm going to select that. And now I can hit flash. And while that's flashing, I'll go grab the subscriber code. That's down here. So there's the subscriber code demo. Copy that. And any minute now, the Pi will reset. OK, so the Pi 0W has been flashed with its code. I'll now go and create a new app and call this sub to subscribe and paste it here. And now I need to set my target to the Pi 3B. I need to save my project and flash that device. While that's flashing, let's take a look at what this is doing. You can see that the subscriber is subscribed to a, a pretty, a pretty non-unique event name. Button pressed is it's short, it's pretty, it's pretty general purpose, but you can see that we've got this extra argument now for the subscribe option. What we're doing here is restricting the instances of this event to only come from my devices. These are devices that are only registered to your own account. That way you can use much simpler, neater event names because you're making it a private event only within your account. Okay, that's finished flashing, so we should be ready to go. Let's have a look at how this works. This is my publish button, I think, so I'll press that. And yeah, so you can see immediately the LED is flashed once. If I press it again, we get two flashes. And of course, three times you get three flashes. Could do this all day, but we'll reset. So I've hit the reset button, nothing appears to happen. But if I press the publish button once more, we only get a single flash. So just as a, a bit of a a bit of a helper here, we can have a look at what's going on behind the scenes by opening up the particle console. So if we click on this icon down the bottom here, second from the bottom, this graphing icon, we can take a look at 
what Particle is doing behind the scenes. So here we are in the Particle console and it's currently waiting for some events now that it's opened. So if I press my button, we get a button pressed event and because I'd already pressed it once before, the data that's sent through is two. We can see that it came from our pi 0w and we even have a timestamp. Now scrolling along the top here, we have kind of like a timeline of events. So if I press that button again, we see that instantly we get the data 3 coming through from button pressed and of course it's coming from our pi 0w. So what happens if you have events coming through really, really quickly? Like if I mash this button lots of times. Okay, so I definitely pressed it more than six or seven times but I only got up to nine. So this is something they have to be a little bit careful of in the particle environment. If you're throwing too many publish events in a short amount of time, they'll be ignored. There is a maximum rate at which you can send data. So that wraps things up for this chapter. We've had a look at some Internet of Things services and how we can integrate our Raspberry Pi into them. We've had a look at IFT and how it can link services. And we've also looked into particle and how we can handle more time sensitive events. If you want to dig a little deeper, I would recommend checking out some of the example applications as well as going to the document section which you can find with this document tab here. This has a lot of example code that you can have a look at. Over on IFT, just have a scroll through the demo applications that are available. If you're looking for some inspiration, these, these are really good templates to work off. I'll see you later.